now we're going to talk about Satan, Lucifer, the evil one. Um, the deceiver has many different names. Um, I'm going to try to give you uh, from the scriptures a uh, description of him physically as well as spiritually. Um, what the Satan, the deceiver, what he can do, what he cannot do, and uh, what it will take for you to fight him, to overcome him, overcome him, and again, ultimately have victory um, with the power of Yeshua and all glory going to Yah, our Father. So, we look at the scriptures, they give us um, different descriptions of the fallen angel, Satan, um, big, powerful, beautiful. Uh, he was adorned in all the finest diamonds, jewelry, all the things we can think of, precious stones that we think are beautiful in this world. He was adorned in those things. Um, unique, one of the first ones of his kind. Um, also, he has been described as the great red dragon. Um, some might dismay or get upset about the picture I have for a red dragon. Again, it's your, your, um, mind's eye what you see is a red dragon but I've never seen a dragon described without horns and again he has the ability to talk and deceive me um, as a serpent um, one that can um, beguile you with his tongue um, the bright morning star um, an angel of light he has different forms, different images that he can take. He looks like so many different things. And then when we talk about him being uh, transformed as an angel of light, you should know who he is and what he can do. Being transformed to the angel of light, he takes the form of those that you might go to and seek um, for the word of God. Um, preachers, ministers, people that you will look for in the confidence of the word, he will deceive you with his beguiling tongue and lead you away, lead you astray. He will look like teachers, policemen, um, civil minded people in our community. When you um, entrust your family, the ones you love, and to their care. Again, with the hope of their keeping the commandments that they won't do no harm. He's there pretending and going to do nothing but harm. He will go after you by all means. Um, he is the great tempter. We know that he tempted um, Adam and Eve in the garden. Got them not to keep the commandments. We also see when he tempted Yeshua and um, with his temptation, what you need to know is that he has no authority and he cannot tempt you. We look at all the things we have in this world, water, food, precious stones.
look so great to you, but you cannot have those things without the Father. We see in Matthew 4, uh, when he tempted Yeshua, how Yeshua defeated him after uh, 40 days of fasting was give him scripture, give him truth. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but every word proceeds out the mouth of God. There was nothing that he could have showed Yeshua to give him that wasn't already provided from the Father. So that's the first thing you need to know, that no matter how the temptation comes, he has nothing that he can't give you because everything has already been provided for you by the Father. We keep his commandments. There is nothing that we cannot have. Next way that he'll go after you is only two ways that he can come after your life. One is if you allow him. The second way is if Yah or the Father deemed you worthy enough to let him into your life. We look at Job being a righteous man. Um, Satan with his lies and deception again um, went to the Father for an audience and let me have him. He He's going to let Job be just like the rest of them. Um, falling and shaking and not believing in the commandments of the Father and turn his, turning himself away. So, after Yah took down the hedge, um, after he couldn't get to Job, he went after everything that he had. Family, house, um, animals. And we have to understand that the deceiver if he can't get to you, he will go after the ones you love. He will go after you in your community. He'll go after you where you worship. He'll go after you in your home. And again, understand that our Father's word is truth. And everything that you already have can be given to you again. And everything that is provided to you by Yah is a blessing. And if you keep with his commandments, with the faith of Yeshua, um, you will have an eternity with those blessings. Next, we look at um, him being an accuser, um, the father of lies, a murderer from the beginning. Um, again, how you defeat the father of lies is to know Yah, your heavenly Father, that His word is truth. Lies are things that keep you in the dark. Um, just like it says, um, what does it take for salvation? What does it take for you to be saved? Um, Yah said in the beginning in Genesis, as he explained to Adam, you keep my commandments, you have the right. He will give you the right to the tree of life. We look at Yeshua, we look at Job, all of them, all down the line, you keep my commandments. You have the right to eternal life. You get that for eternal life. Um, you see in Revelations, the same thing in Revelations 22. You keep the commandments with the faith of Yeshua um, together. All of you being one, the same substance, you will have eternal life. The lies come from that you won't have eternal life. The lies come from when they tell you you have to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G in order to get salvation. And you know, they'll go around with words that come out the Bible and they sound lies. But at the end of the day, they're not telling you to keep your Father's commandments. So there is no salvation there. Salvation only comes from keeping His commandments. Um, we know that since he's been transformed that he's a liar that the forms that he take can be near and dear to you close to your heart and again the only reason why he'll take those forms is to waver your spirit um, a mother a father a child um, them being lost in the world um, drug addiction or no love for the Father, or doctrine of men. It goes all down the line, things that you can look at and see that there is no salvation in them. 
that there is no hope in what they're doing. Because the only hope that we can have is that to be in heaven with our Father. And when you're lost, you can't see where the light is coming from. And the one that's uh, transformed to look like an angel of light in his lies, he can keep them lost for so long. That's why we need the patience of the saints. Keep the commandments. Show love to your brothers and your sisters and anyone that you're teaching the word to, as well as to yourself. And knowing that you have to be long suffering for as long as the Creator has created everything. I mean, if you think of what Yah has done for us already, He created everything that we would need um, the sun for warmth, the moon to keep the oceans at bay, um, food, land, anything we can need and ask for. I mean, the gift of life should be enough, right? But he's given us all, and yet we still keep turning away, um, not keeping his commandments. The, the funniest day about not, um, not keeping the Sabbath is, I don't care what point of society you look at, what government, what world, from Samaritans to the Egyptians to Babylonians to Americans, any culture you want to think of in this world, no one has created seven days a week except for the Father. It is only comes from one source. But yet we will tell the Father that his seven days are not what he said they are. Think about it. That his word is not truth. No one gave you those days but him. But yet, still, we let the father of lies influence us, influence us on what we think. So that's the one about Satan, the adversary. Um, he can take those different forms, uh, what the scriptures describe him of, the spirit that he comes in. Remember, a spirit that leads you away from your father's spirit. A spirit that will lead you to the second death, will lead you to damnation. Hell was not made for you. It was made for him and his angels. But many of the ones we love and know and we see are going to follow him to that same spot. So we pray without ceasing. We say the Father's name without ceasing. And here is the patience of the saints, those that keep his commandments and do the will of our Father with the faith of Yeshua. Now that we know who Satan is, the adversary, let's see a clear picture of what path he has chosen from the beginning so we can protect the ones we love, um, so we can tell his fruits. And we can avoid that same path of destruction that he is walking on. First, in Genesis chapter 2, we see that our father worked and then he rested. The first thing he did with Adam, chapter 2 in Genesis verse 9, was teach him to work. So he definitely taught him how to rest. Next, we see him giving him a commandment. Um, the commandment of not eating from the tree of knowledge. And surely he would die if he didn't keep that commandment. Um, next we see him make Eve. Eve had to been taught by Yah or Adam both to keep the commandments of Yah. Not to eat from the tree of um, knowledge or she would die. So that's the first thing she tells of to the adversary when he comes along. Being a trickster. And um, he tells her surely you will not die if you eat this tree of uh, this fruit. And you will be as a God. We know that from his works that he doesn't want to keep the commandments of Yah. That he doesn't want you to keep the commandments of Yah. We also see in Revelations chapter 22 the same thing. If you keep the commandments of your father, you keep the commandments of Yah, you will enter into eternal life. Keep the commandments. 